in this episode, I'm going to share the top five things that most people don't tell you about starting and building a successful photography business. This is not just for those of you who are just starting out, but this is also for seasoned pros who still aren't where they want to be in their business yet. We're gonna talk about five things that can have the greatest impact in building your photography business. I'm Law and I'm a boudoir photographer and business and marketing mentor helping creatives turn their passion into profits. On this channel, I share tips, tricks, and hacks to having a wildly successful and profitable photography business. Starting a photography business might seem easy as, as easy as having a passion for taking pictures, buying a camera, and starting to charge for your services. This couldn't be further from the truth. There is a lot more to starting a business if you want to be in business for longer than a few months and you want to create a consistent income that's reliable. I'm going to share with you my top five pieces of advice on where you should be putting your focus to start building a successful and sustainable photography business. And if you're already in business, focus on these top five things to actually grow your business. The first thing that you must have is capital. You must have enough capital saved up to cover your overhead and marketing costs till you start making a profit. When I personally found boudoir photography and fell in love, I spent six months taking on as many random shoots as I could, things I didn't really wanna be doing, but did anyways, and working jobs with my husband Damon in his junk hauling and demolition company and painting company. This is actually during the time when we had lost over a million dollars, we're a hundred thousands of dollars in debt. Um, it's probably a story for another day. If you guys are interested in hearing our story, then let me know in the comments below and I will put it on the priority list to record. But anyways, I still remember it was the middle of summer, like the hottest part of summer and we were supposed to be tearing down and demoing an entire mobile home, taking it piece by piece and putting it into a trailer to take to the dump. It was over 90 degrees with around 80% humidity because a big thunderstorm was rolling in. I was just drenched and covered in sweat. If you live in the Midwest, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was covered head to toe with filth. I had insulation sticking to me and I just kept thinking, just keep going, just keep going, just keep pushing through. This is money that you can put towards your new photography business and what you really wanna be doing. I said this for at least six months until I had saved enough money to lay down my business foundation and officially start my business. So make sure that you have enough money, enough capital to lay down your business foundation properly and enough left over to cover at least probably six months. Advice number two is you have to be willing to make sacrifices. You may need to skip your kid's birthday parties this year or downsize them. You might have to get more creative on date nights and avoid steak dinners and luxury movie theater nights and exchange that for Netflix and chill or get a blanket and go stargazing. You might have to pick up a few extra shifts um, or a part-time job for a little bit in order to afford the money for your business LLC or to attend some workshops to master your skills or to pay a coach to show you how to start your business and lay that proper foundation. Sacrifices aren't easy, but when your why is big enough, you find a way. Advice number three is you must learn to separate business and family. A lot of photographers that I work with are stay-at-home moms who want to contribute to their financial, you know, their family finances and have the flexibility to be at home with their kids or be at important school functions or events. My best advice is hire a babysitter for a few hours on certain days so that you can accomplish those things in your business in addition to obviously consultation shoots and reveals. Some moms feel guilt over this of hiring a babysitter, 
But the truth is, is if you try to be with your kids while also trying to tackle business tasks, neither of them gets your full attention and you feel pulled in two separate directions. When you set aside time to focus 100% on each, you get way more done in your business. And then when you are with your kids, you can be 100% present with them since you already got done what you needed to in your business. I promise you that your kids will be so much happier to have your attention for less time, but when you're 100% present with them. And you're gonna be happier because you're not feeling pulled in two different directions and your business will grow so much faster. Give it a try, I promise it will work. Advice piece number four is master your skills. Everyone talks about how flooded and oversaturated our photography industry is, but the problem is it's oversaturated with amateurs. To stand out in the crowd, you must master your craft. You must create masterpieces. Focus on niching down to one to two genres and becoming a master at them. People who value art and photography and who are looking to invest money into paying a professional photographer, they're looking for experts. They're looking for quality, service, and mastery. So focus on mastering your camera, focus on mastering your lighting, mastering your posing, mastering your retouching, mastering your style, mastering your confidence, mastering your client experience and service, mastering your business processes and systems. Become a master at what you do and at the art of business and you will stand out far above the crowd. Number five piece of advice is you have to invest in order to get a return. Gotta spend money to make money. Photography is an extremely low investment for the return that you can actually make. But you have to learn where to invest your money so you get the greatest return. You guys will hear me talk about ROI all the time. A lot of photographers try to go the free route and build their business using their time. But your time is your most valuable asset even more valuable than money because it's the one thing that you can never get back, the one thing you can't replace or get more of. So make sure that you're guarding it accordingly. Learn how to leverage your time by learning where to invest your money to get the highest return. And like when I learned these things in my business, my business exploded. And when I shared these lessons with my private photography coaching clients, their businesses exploded too. Growing by over 1100% in just 12 months. Another person went from $7,000 to $84,000 in one year. It's life changing. Being able to accomplish the goal of taking your family to on an all expense paid dream vacation to Disney is so rewarding. Um, being sold out for an entire year, 15 days into that new year. These are all things that my coaching clients have been accomplishing by investing in the right places and in themselves. I could definitely keep going. There are lots of things that you can be doing, but these are my top five pieces of advice on where to start putting your focus to either start building your photography business or start growing it faster. So focus on these five things and I have no doubt that you will be successful. If you're stuck on where you should be investing in your business for the greatest return, I do offer a limited number of complimentary 30 minute strategy sessions where I kind of get to know you specifically, take a peek into your business, see what's working, see what's not working, and give you clarity and focus um, on how to work smarter and not harder in accomplish your and how to accomplish your next business goals. I'll put that link below in case you guys find that helpful and want to schedule a strategy session. Thanks again for hanging out. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe.